not live. Okay, it's recording now. Maybe that's why I couldn't hear Matt yesterday. Maybe Can you hear me now? I feel like it's in that that um, that commercial yes, can. where it's like, "Can you hear me now?" <laughs> I know. I'll I'll edit it out. So this is the fabulous Miss Jordan Wooten, and she <laughs> she just turned twenty one, and she is at UNT, and she graduates in twenty four, and she is my daughter, my oldest daughter, and I wanted to brag on her and. Um, have her share what she's about to go do. And we've been working really hard on getting her um, plans in order. <laughs> and I'm excited. So can you hear me now, Ronnie? Stop it. Okay, so here we go. Miss Jordan, you have the stage. Cool. Well, my name is Jordan. Um, uh, currently, I'm majoring in integrative studies. So it's kind of like um, a build your own kind of major. Basically, I get to do like um, hospitality and tourism, business management and uh, intercultural communications. So it's kind of like a three in one kind of thing, which is really fun. And I like that I don't have to take a bunch of classes that I don't care about. I get to kind of pick and choose what I want. So that's been really cool to be able to um, like tailor my degree to exactly what I want to do with my life. Um, but it's been hard. And I last semester was really hard. I just kind of like wasn't doing well in school because I didn't like what I was doing. And I was struggling with like mental health and like friendship issues. So everything was like kind of hitting me at once and I was like I don't know what I want to do with my life and so I kind of had a crisis <laughs> and, um but I've always um I guess I'll start where I like got the passion for what I'm doing basically my goal is to open a coffee shop that is like a hub for people to um just kind of see inclusivity and um, love like up close instead of just kind of like, oh, people with special needs exist. People with like um, disabilities exist and things like that, which yes, they do, but they also have to work and they have to learn life skills and they have to do everything. So um, it's been kind of like a, a long time coming on this. Um, I've been volunteering with um, Camp Blessing that turned into Camp Beloved and Beyond um, in 2021 um, after COVID and everything. So that's a camp that uh, basically does um, like summer camps and special needs ministry and stuff. And they're wanting to expand and um, open their own coffee shop, which is cool. And they asked me if I wanted to help with that too. And I was like, sure, the more the merrier, <laughs> I can do it all, it's fine. Um, but I didn't know that I liked coffee until I started working <laughs> at a coffee shop my sophomore year of college. And um, I didn't know anything. I, I mean, I've always liked coffee, but I didn't know anything about coffee. I was just like, okay, ha, 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 cute little college job, whatever. And then I kind of saw like how cool the community was and how inclusive everyone and how. Or, you have how my jeans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so it was a really cool experience to learn how to do that. And I've kind of bopped around between um, different positions and different um, coffee shops in the area and I've kind of just figured out I feel like everybody who works in coffee is like I can do it better I can open my own and make it the way I want it which I'm sure you could but whatever um, so that's where I kind of meshed the two I was like oh I love the special needs ministry and I've loved being able to um like get to hang out with them during the summers and um, just kind of like volunteer with that. 
But then I was like, well, I also love coffee and I really want to open a coffee shop. And so I was like, maybe, <laughs> hear me out. I open a coffee shop that provides um, like employment for people with special needs, um, employment for honestly anyone. Um, I don't want it to be like, I don't want it to stop so there. I want it to be. Um, Only special needs or just everybody? Everybody. So, well, yeah. obviously within like, you know, I'm not going to hire people that are dangerous yeah. or, you know, but yeah. Um, but I mean, if they don't have a home and they need a job, cool. If you are just getting off the streets and are struggling with like addiction or whatever, and you just need a place to like get your feet back on the ground and get reintegrated into the world, like I'm down. I literally am so open to everyone and everything that everyone can bring to the table. So Jordan, um, I need to share a picture of you um, that I found this morning. A friend of mine passed away. Go ahead and keep talking. Is that okay? It's it's yeah. one that you're okay. Go ahead. Keep talking. So um that's where that kind of dream started and then it's been kind of a wild ride since then i have been trying to finish school and also work and i also have a dog and i also have extreme depression and so it's just a lot of things coming at me at once and it's difficult to manage it all but I think that it's given me a lot of purpose and um, it kind of gives me like a goal to work towards, which I think is really cool. Um, and it's kind of forced me like out of my comfort zone to be like networking and learning about business, which literally no one likes to do, but you know, <laughs> you gotta do it. <laughs> so uh, that's basically what I've been doing and so far, I have um, reserved the name. I have um, one of my friends is a graphic designer, and she made the logo, which I can share too. Um, is it done? Well, pretty much. Um, I see. It's, it's really cool. I'll have to tell the story behind it. And yeah. um, what else have we done? We've worked with, oh, we um, have been interviewing like people that are smarter and more intelligent than us because you know I would like to learn from other people's mistakes before I make them myself which is inevitable but you know as long as much as I can avoid that so what's your plan are you going to go so you're going to go to Colorado this summer after you get done with camp tell about camp what happened with camp and um also go ahead that was cool yeah. So basically, um, I have been kind of anxious about going back to camp because there's, um, you don't talk about that, but yeah, anyway. well, I'm, <laughs> yeah. for unforeseen circumstances, it's been awkward to go back to camp. Um, and so it's been a big part of my life and I really don't want to let that, um, like stop me from going. So I'm going back, but I'm this time around, I'm working with the adults that are coming to like actually work at camp. So we have um, campers that come and just have fun. And then we have like adult campers that have been there for a long time and they come and make money and they learn about Jesus and they learn about working and they learn life skills. And a lot of them have um, gotten really cool jobs because of camp and like they've learned how to work and um they're just there hanging out, having fun. Um, so I get to do that. But they asked me um, randomly, somebody donated a bunch of espresso machines and like coffee stuff, syrups, cups, everything. And the um, the girl who's in charge of it all was like, hey, saw your resume. Um, uh, sorry, let me turn my. I, did, I had to do do not disturb to shut mine off. I couldn't I know. figure it out. Do not disturb because it did that to me yesterday. Um, so, but yeah, yeah, so she was like, 
you know, we have all this stuff and we don't know what to do with it. We don't know how to organize it. Like the camp wants to open their own shop. And um, I think it would be really cool if you could help with that. And so I was like, sure. And then <laughs> uh, the, the other guy that's going to work on it with me is actually opening, his parents are opening um, a Biddy and Bows, which is a franchise coffee shop that is opening in Boulder, which hopefully I'll work out, but. Oh, so it's a franchise. Mm -hmm. I thought it was already open. No. Um, so okay. they're going there to open up the franchise. And you're going to go work there, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Keep going. Sorry. I mean it. So if you didn't know what Biddy and Bows is, it's pretty popular, but it's a awesome. shop that um, hires people with special needs primarily. And um, yeah, so my goal, whenever I move to Colorado in July, is to work for them, learn about uh, the best way to organize people with special needs and what they can and can't do, what they should and shouldn't do, um, what kind of life skills I should be teaching, um, how to make everything accessible to people with wheelchairs and things like that. So um, it's just going to be kind of like a huge learning experience. Um, and then once I'm done with that, I'm going to open my own. And it's actually in Waco. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. I've been. It's really yeah. cool. They, it, I went, the um, whenever they had a, they had like their five year anniversary or something recently. And I went on that day and they had a dance party every hour on the hour with like everyone. And it was so cute. It was so That's awesome. So oh, yeah, yeah, I just put it there. So, and then your company has been called Canon Coffee Co, right? Okay. Yes. Um, okay. So what? So what is your goal right now? What are you planning on doing in Colorado? What's What's up next in July after camp? What's the story? So after camp, I'm gonna work for Biddy and Bo's. Figure out, you know, how to do it. You know, how to work well with people with special needs and. Um, kind of network and learn about like what places would be good to open, um, what kind of people I should order supplies from, um, things like that, that are just like logistics that I wouldn't be able to know until I got there. Um, and then- Do you think they'll share it with you, that information? I don't I know. I guess we'll see. You're gonna work I mean, there, so. If they don't, <laughs> I can just go ask, cause I have friends that'll probably work there, so. Um, yeah. But yeah, so once I do that, I'll just open my own. Yeah, I mean, nothing too much to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hi, what are you eating? So where's is Sydney there? No, is Sydney at the to my dog. I just heard oh. him chewing on something. I didn't know what it was, but yeah, I have a nine month old right now. <laughs> I told you he's chewing on everything. So, um, what would that look like to you to go find a coffee shop where you know and we were talking about where you would live and what you would do. And so we were talking about like living above the coffee shop or. <laughs> yeah. So if you were a manager, how would you. Um, owner. An owner. Yeah. You would own and you going to hire a manager. Mm, okay. Maybe. I don't know. So I just talked to, I was going to tell you, I talked to a lady that she lives in Colorado. She is a house manager. And she makes $150,000 a year. And all she does is sit at the house and make sure the house is okay. And so I was going to hook you guys up. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, That's sickening. That's. Well, she, I mean, good she for says, her. But yeah, I she, ass off. And I. I know. Really there's. A, I know. That's why I was going to share your, her info with you. She said there's a lot of um, rich people in Colorado that have big, huge houses that need people mm -hmm. to watch. So I was going to share that info. So maybe, just maybe, we could get you a nice place to live on top of a place to watch and a nice salary for 150000 And then while you do that, you can think about your coffee shop and finish your school. Really so? Really so? Just thinking. Just thinking. So you and Sydney could live it up. 
Heck Jordan yeah. Ronnie says Jordan. <laughs> I could get her and Michaela making seven figures right now. They just don't want to do real estate. So um, a lot of money to be made. Just got to work. It's hard. I think this, I, I think I might go up to Colorado and house it. <laughs> so we're going to get you in touch with her. Um, she was supposed to be on the podcast tonight. I don't know if she is or not. So, okay, keep going. Tell us about. Um, hmm. So July, are you coming back? <coughs> are you going to come back after you work in the summer? Or are you going to just stay there? We should see how it goes. Um, I mean, if I you know, sign a lease, I have to, yeah. but I mean, I will see, I don't know what's going to happen with that coffee shop. Um, I kind of just put my name out there and I was like, Hey, I'm really interested. I applied, but I haven't really heard anything from them, but they don't oh. open until August. So I don't think that they're like hiring just yet which is fine. Um, but I don't know. I think once I finish camp, I'm just going to come back and pack and then start Figured thinking out. about what to do, I guess. Are you going to take a U-Haul? <laughs> no. U-Hauls are so yeah. expensive. I sold pretty much everything big that I have and then whatever I didn't really want to sell that was, like, really nice, um, I'm giving to Michaela because she is moving um, to – Michaela's my sister. If I, I don't know. I'm sure everybody sure me too. But she's just moving to um, a house instead of an apartment with some more friends. I don't know. Okay, I'll stay out of it. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> um is she she's staying at she, okay we'll talk later um so another thing is they do have furnished apartments there i was calling yesterday and i was calling around i don't know if you talked to the second one that i sent to but um I did you applied. call them? i did you okay, good i sent in my application and then um when i have time i don't know when that'll be but i'll call them eventually um i can call them back i'll call them back i'll let them no. know that you applied I'm doing interviews of people in the industry that I've known for a while. Um, so who just, are you interviewing? So I'm doing um, my friends that have worked in coffee for a while. So I just like sent them a text and I was like, Hey, um, I have some questions about um, like the coffee industry, your take on it, what you think should be better. Um, and I think that it would be really cool to get like the inside scoop of people who have worked in coffee shops that have, you know, the idea that they could do something better or they wish that a certain thing was done a different way. Um, and so I think that having a compiled list of a bunch of people's ideas of how things can be better and like the younger generation, um, like their take on the industry and just like management styles in general, I think that would, would be really cool. Um, and I have like a pretty vast, like diverse group of people that I'm interviewing so I can get people from all over and different. What if you were to go and sit in the coffee shop and do it? Like, we are which, yeah, is that what you're going to do? Yeah, we're doing and like, well, we're actually going to do it outside of a coffee shop, but like on the patio of the shop. Um, like, well, but, it's just a random person. You know what I mean? Like, just a random coffee person. I don't know. Just like grab a Starbucks manager and say, hey, you just go to Starbucks. I know you want to go to the personal ones, but just kind of see the difference between Starbucks. Because this guy was telling me, it's not my client anymore. He was like, yeah, people just want to get in. They don't want to talk to you. They want their coffee and they want to leave. But people, and you know that, right? But people in uh, like smaller towns that you sit down and have your coffee or whatever, they they want to sit down and visit and have their coffee. But the city people, like you, you wouldn't be able to. He was like, you can't do it in those big cities because they're just gonna they just they want Starbucks. They don't care about small coffee shops. They don't care about special needs people. They just want to get their coffee and go to work, and that's all they care about. Because that's what he shared, and that's what he want. That's what he how he felt 
So I don't yeah, know. And then I also think that to be honest, I have worked in a city, like a big city, and I've also worked in a really small town. And there's, they're everywhere. Yep. There, oh. There's people that work out in small towns and also want to get in and get out and get their coffee and are rude and don't care. But there's also people in the big cities that are there to hang out with their friends and just sit and chill for a little bit. So okay. I there are, like, definitely, like, geographically, I think that that's an important thing to take into consideration, but you're going to have those kind of people everywhere. Like there's, you just can't avoid rude people and it's really what you, how you treat them and what you say to them and And how you personally take it. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever, you know, they're just giving their coffee. A lady that I interviewed, she um, was one of the first yeah, she was one of the first women in the DFW area to open up um, a coffee shop, which I think oh. that is really cool. She did it all on her own. Um, she's really successful. Um, so I went with my friend Sydney and we sat down and talked to her and she was really nice. nice. Um, but she told us, she was like, there was this one guy who would come in for like months and months and would get a cold brew and wouldn't say anything. And they called him cold brew Joe. Cause I didn't even know his name. <laughs> and one day the owner just sat down and was like, Hey, how's your morning going? And he was like taken aback and he was like, Oh, um, fine. And like left. And so ever since then, like he's been one of their like, biggest regulars he comes in and talks all the time and right. it's just like sometimes people just they're nervous they don't yeah. know like how to interact with people and they honestly like expect the worst from people try i'm sorry <laughs> um, and so it's just the way that you treat customers is so important and the way that you go above and beyond for people is like the biggest thing. She gave us a book called um, Unreasonable Hospitality. And it's a really good book. I would recommend it. But it talks a lot about how like people will be stunned if you're hospitable. And that's like an easy thing to do it's so easy to just be nice to someone like it literally takes so much effort to be angry <laughs> like it's yeah. so anyways but i got on the team. Really think that that's true um you have to be nice and i'm just that way i i love people and i love talking to people and i'm just have that you know nature but um you know eventually you kind of grow after so many people have hurt you. You kind of get, you know, I don't know. I, I have to step back sometimes and forget about that and just respond the way I should. I understand. But I understand. It's hard. Working in customer service will do it to you. I think yeah. I've heard and I have said that I think everybody should work a year or two in customer service before they get their driver's license. Like, <laughs> why is that? Because it why literally that? teaches you so much about like respect and it gives you a different like point of view of just how burnt out people get of saying hey how are you today what can I get for you and Mm -hmm. having to deal with angry customers and rude people and people that literally treat you like a doormat like they're they're just horrible people and so working in customer service I feel like makes you have to be nice to people regardless of if you want to or not and and it's just a big learning curve of having to get along with random people that you're just thrown in the mix of and i don't know so (laughs) i think either before you have to vote or before you (coughs) license one of the two but i think it gave me a different perspective and a different viewpoint on just like the way that I see people in general, it's very humbling and it's very eye-opening to see, I don't know, just people in their element. And it's 
sometimes fun, sometimes not fun, but whatever. Especially when they don't have their coffee, right? <laughs> have you experienced that? Dude, okay, <laughs> I work at a bagel shop right now, uh-huh. and people get so angry about bagels. It is really? literally a bagel. And sometimes I want to leap over the counter and be like, you come do my job. Come do my job and see what how- What were they mad about? I mean, it's oh a bagel. I'm saying, I won't go into it, but there are people- No, really, that I want to hear. <laughs> Tell me this story, I want to hear. Okay, so maybe this is a good learning experience for people. I don't know, but- <laughs> we got plenty of time. <laughs> so one time, this was like two weeks ago, I think, but there's this lady that comes in that not even the owner likes. Like she's always just trying to get a deal. She's trying to like get something from us. Oh my God. I'm saying, <laughs> and she just she's the kind of person that like will try and make you feel bad about something so that you will give her something free. And so I've I was already going into it with that mindset because she had been in before. And so I, I walked up and I was like, okay, how's it going? And she started hey, ordering. You said, hey, how's it going? Yeah. I don't <laughs> like her. Nobody likes her. They really wanted to ban her from the store. That's how bad she is. <laughs> and nobody wanted to deal with her. So I went up there and I was like, what can I get for you? You know, whatever. And then you even say hi, started can I sub this for this? Can I do all this? And can the, can the like, $5 combo that's just coffee and a bagel, can I sub that for like milk or a soda? And I'm like, it's literally written on the menu, coffee and a bagel. Why are you just, why do you? It is that sounds like me, Jordan. I feel bad now. <laughs> I just, but I'm used to people. I know. You're a nice person. <clears throat> There's a difference between like <laughs> trying to weasel your way in and get people to give you free things and like genuinely not knowing and that's okay i like to change orders that's what i do i like to add ham or (laughs) and i'm I'm fine with paying for it that's just right daddy hates it he hates every time we go to the drive through we get a bite well it's the people that don't want to pay for it is yeah it's like why are you here if you don't want to spend money? Like, why did you get out of your car with your wallet in your hand and expect to get free stuff? Like, anyways. If I frequented a bagel shop, though, and I knew what they had, I would not, maybe I'd just say, hey, can I get the Rebecca special? And make, you know, you know, and something like that. But- like that. And that's fine. Like, if you want to, people will go into stores and they want to be known and they want to be seen and remembered. And that's fine. Like, if somebody ordered the same thing every day and they said, can I get the Rebecca special? I'd be like, sure thing. I got you. Like, don't even worry about it. Yeah. But anyways, so this lady got to the point where I started crying. I went to the really? back and I told my manager, I said, I need you to go up there and deal with her before I do it myself. And you don't want me to do it myself. So you need to go up there. And even my manager, she literally went up to the lady and was like, what can I give you to get you to get out of the store right now? Like, oh, wow. well, I will literally just give you a $20 bill. Like, I need you to leave. Because if it gets to the point where I'm crying, like, up front, like, I don't cry, really, in public at all. Like, I'm, I'm happy, bubbly, whatever. Especially at work, like, nobody knows that side of me that's like not happy all the time whatever um and so they were shocked and I was like I cannot deal with this woman I really I just can't do it and all the customers behind me were like (laughs) and what did she ask for that's I want to know what did she say like you cry so she literally was trying to get these other bagels that she didn't pay for, first of all. But I just started, like, throwing stuff in a bag at that point. I was like, you can take all these bagels. I don't care. Like, just please leave. I And everything I did, she had something to say about it. Like, oh, you accidentally touched that with your finger. Can I get a new one? 
Like oh, wow. that one's too brown. I want a lighter one. Can you not put wow. that bagel there? Actually, can you can it, like overbearing, like trying to do every little thing for me? And I was like, <laughs> I just did the same thing. <laughs> wow, it's <laughs> hard to do, isn't it? I was so frustrated, and I think it's I don't know. And so being in that position, I think like things like that are even bigger learning experiences for like the way I handle people and like being able to understand when horrible things happen to my employees one day and I'm like dude I've been there I get it I can handle it just go to the back don't worry about it like I want to be able to understand where people are coming from um and if let me tell you something i'm gonna interrupt you wendy diverson my old lender she bought our house on Fawn valley i don't know if you remember her she was that blonde lady smart woman mm, lover yeah. we don't work together anymore because she gave me a time management book and that doesn't work for me um <laughs> long story she told me and i share this with everybody i know that you know realtors are in customer service or whatever you know, everybody thinks it's like now, 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 or whatever, you know, whatever bagels, you know, situation. Just remember, you're not carrying a heart in a cooler. It's only customer service or it's only real estate is what I, you know, it's only, just remember that. And so, you know, it's not, the end of the world is not going to happen if you don't do a certain thing or act a certain way. You know, See? yes, it is not that. <laughs> I I would love to think that way, but I just can't. I like what? I'll have people standing there watching me doing something and I feel bad if I'm not moving. Like <coughs> if I'm not helping in any way or like if a customer is just staring at me and I've finished my part of the job, you know, but it's like I want to help. I want to get everybody out the door and happy at the same time. It's, yeah. it's difficult, but like I can relate to that. I know, and I think it's just because I'm a hard worker, and you're never I, gonna make them happy. By the way, what? <laughs> you're never gonna make them happy. I know. I know. On a different level, I'm just like thinking about myself in your job, and you know, I'm like, it's just never gonna happen, mm -mm. and they're never gonna be happy. I can work my butt off doing, you know, a whole transaction. At the very end, one little tiny thing like a mailbox key can just set them off, and then they're just. They're not yeah. happy and they're just, I mean, I got a negative review because of that. It wasn't even my fault and I don't get negative reviews and this guy was crazy. Um, but yeah, I mean, sorry. okay. <coughs> my boys are outside. There. <laughs> so introduce this to your boy. <coughs> I, can I see muted him. myself. Well, you can see his butt. This is <laughs> Hi, come here, baby. Oh, he's crazy. Now you have um, Kingdom. Okay. And what kind of dog is he? Because I had the apartment people asking me that. Um, I think the he's a Catahoula. Okay. Um, I just put Catahoula because it's not a scary breed and he looks. <coughs> what are they going to do? Ask me for paperwork. He kind of looks like a boxer. He looks like a pit almost like his face does. Yeah. But. A boxer, I think. Really? Maybe. I don't know. I can't see his face, so I can't tell. From the behind, he looks like a boxer. <laughs> he looks like a boxer in the face. Yeah. Let me see his mouth. <laughs> He's just a mixed boy. He's sweet. He's a mutt. How old is he? How He's old about is he? Two. He's almost two. He was born in December. So he hasn't stopped chewing yet? Uh, okay. He stopped chewing... <laughs> Now he has started his rebellious phase where he does things on purpose um, mm -hmm. and he targets them. So oh. if there's something new I get that's cool and I'm giving it more attention than him, if I leave, he'll eat it. Like your calendar? Mm -hmm. My calendar. <laughs> I got incense one time and he ate up the, the little stand that I got for it. Oh. Um, what else did he eat? He, he's eaten so many things. Anyways, Stinker. I also wanted to talk about, I think that 
right now, um, it's been, I don't know, I'm, t I'm thinking more towards the future, but um, I'm a little bit anxious about people taking me seriously in the industry and um, just like being a business owner in general. I feel like um, the past couple years, I think it's gotten a little bit less of a negative stigma around it, but um, women in the business industry is kind of like a weird concept for some people. Um, and just because it's such a male dominated field, and especially since I'm young and bright and bushy tailed and everything, like, I mean, that's just how people are going to perceive me. Um, Own it. Own I it, girl. I'm going to try, but I think <laughs> that that's going to be one of my setbacks or like the thing that is going to be difficult is. Um, like that yeah. barrier to entry of just like me as a person, like people don't know what I know. They don't know my brain, but they do know what's on the outside and like what they see. What is Someone's that? Outside random. They're mowing? Oh yeah. Jordan, do you want to hear what I used to be afraid of when I first got my license? What? I think you probably know. Old men that were commercial, like dry, rickety old men that were, you know, they thought they were, or older women that thought they were just, and you know what? Now I know that the younger you are, the more, you know, because the more school you go to, the more things you do and the more you are, you're in the, you're in the learning process. And I literally got done, just got done taking 905 hours of classes and a lot of people don't do that in real estate because they finish college and you can transfer all your hours to college. I mean, to, to your license. So you could like just be a realtor without having to take any classes, by the way. And um, they don't know anything, you know, and they don't take classes and they don't know anything. And I'll, I'll talk to, you know, I got over it finally because I was like, they don't know anything, you know, because I talked to, except for my old broker, Bill, he knows everything. My first broker. He knows everything. Bill. We love you. Remember, Bill? I know I invited him to the thing. He just smart, smart man. Um, but the rest of them, they don't, they don't know anything and they think they do. And if they just don't, because they don't go to class and they don't do what they're supposed to do and keep up with the time. So just remember that, you know, people are going to be like, um, especially men, but you don't have to worry about anything. You're not going to have any competition because you're going to be the bomb. Well, you're going to be the coffee shop. Honestly, I'm not as scared of other people as I am of, like, failure, if that makes sense. Um, like, I, I think I'm my own worst critic. I think everybody is, but um, I, I'm not really scared of older men or older women because I know that, like, most of them have my best interest at heart. So, not all of them. Um, <laughs> not all of them. Don't trust everybody. I know. I the people that I've met and the old, honestly, I, you got I really don't like middle-aged men. I'll say it. <laughs> That's a good thing that you won't marry somebody older than you. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, Why do you like them? Well, they usually, just from my experience in like coffee so far, they usually like just think that they know everything or they like want to impress someone that they're with or they want to be all like macho whatever and I think that the older people get like 60s 70s 80s they realize that that's literally stupid and nobody cares <laughs> but exactly. um so like seniors I feel like I'm not as intimidated by but it's the people that feel like they have something to prove is that's like, what I meant. Yeah. Like the old, yeah, yeah. you're right. I, people like that are like, okay, weird. Yeah. Do your thing. I don't care. <laughs> There's a lot of people like that in real estate too. A lot. And I, I just pretend like I don't know anything and I just try to learn more and try to remain humble and you got to have a reputation and you got to have, you know, something out there, but 
I don't pretend like I'm know everything. I try not to. Yeah. And I try to help. I love helping. And that's why I want to be a broker. I'm almost there. I, I want to help agents and help people and, you know, not have to run around selling houses anymore. Um, so I know you're going to do great. You're a good salesman. And you need to have Michaela come work with you because she's a good salesman too. She needs to make her PowerPoint presentations. <laughs> Me and daddy were talking about that the other day. I um, made a PowerPoint presentation I learned from Michaela. I made one <laughs> to convince mama to, that it was okay for me to move to Colorado because she was like, I don't know. I don't think you should. I'm scared. <laughs> and so I did all the research and put it on this pretty little PowerPoint. And she goes, Aww. oh, okay. I think it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I did talk to that lady. She said there's a lot of crime in Colorado. More I than all, in, in Texas, she said. I'm like, are you sure? She's a lot of homeless um, people and uh, a lot of crime. And I'm like, so maybe you should check out Colorado Springs. Is it Colorado Springs you were talking about the other day? Um, I no, can't remember. It was, um, Lafayette, I think. No, it was Colorado something. The one that I told you the guys had to go to. Oh, see, Colorado Springs, I think that that would be a cool place to visit, but I don't know yeah. that I would want to open a shop there just because um, – from what I've like done in my research and everything and like reading about it's it, right. it's kind of, um, it's kind of a military based town, I believe. Oh. Um, and it's a lot of, um, retired people, retired military owner or not owners. Um, people used to be in the military. So, um, really? there's not a lot of diversity there, which I mean, there's diversity everywhere, but just in general, that's like the biggest thing that I've read about. I do remember Corey said he moved there. I don't, honestly, I don't know where he is now. Oh, he, that's where he went? Oh, I didn't know that. I just know the guy said that that's where all the Republicans are and that's where all the Christians are. So in Colorado, the rest of them are all, we want to talk about that. <laughs> that's where he said that. Yeah. And that's where everybody carries guns. So FYI. <laughs> yeah. I well. See, I don't really want to be in a little bubble of people that yeah. are only Republican and only Christian <laughs> because I think that that's like the opposite of what I want to do. Um, I kind of want to bring in want diversity. Yeah, I want to bring in everyone and I want people to learn from each other and grow and I don't think that that would be a great environment of growth if everyone was just the same race and ethnicity and religion and politics and you know so but Jordan I just want to put you in that bubble and just stave <laughs> I, I know I got it I got it don't stress Cheryl says lots of pot smoking there must be oh. diverse <laughs> yes Cheryl there is a lot of pot smoking there the um, devil's lettuce brings everyone together, I guess. <laughs> um, I think it's going to be okay. I think it'll be fine. I think yeah, I'm not stressed. I got chai. I'll bring a... Daddy says, wow, man. <laughs> yeah. And you're going to get a gun. You're going to get a concealed handgun. So that's going to be good. Coco, yeah. what does that mean, Cheryl? Coco. I don't know. Oh, one thing I like with my coffee is chocolate. Are you going to do chocolate and coffee? Like, have that available? Yeah. It's so yummy. Like, hot cocoa and coffee. She said chai. Oh. Oh, okay. chai. That's her dog's name, chai. That's her dog's name. Yeah. Have you ever made chai? Remember we made that at the house one time? We had chai seeds or something, and we had chai tea. We made chai tea. Gosh. Now you're getting you're getting kingdom and um Chico riled up. Do you remember chai tea we made it once? Mm-hmm. I don't Did know remember, remember what it tastes like. Chai is <coughs> and the word chai means tea, so when people say chai tea lattes or whatever, they're saying <coughs> Well my love, I appreciate your time. And I'm excited for you, and I pray blessings on everything that happens, and I'll be right there with you the whole way. 
Thank you. Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> and tell Sid we said hi. Maybe okay. I can interview Sid. That'd be fun. Be watching for your um, show. Huh? Daddy's saying inappropriate things, so I'm going to close the chat. Oh. <laughs> I love you, and I'll send you the uh, the video when I'm done editing. Okay, cool. Thank you, Jordan Wooten. Yeah. Much success to you. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. -bye.